Hey, what's up, guys? Mike's here. Alright, I'm gonna have to talk about this video. For all Ninjago fans, uh, for those of you who don't know about the Day of Departed, that is, like, last year on October 29th. That is the, uh, it's this very special, uh, very special episode of Ninjago. For those of you who are Ninjago fans, that was a very amazing episode. And I did the very first live stream. I never, I never had done the my life for that first live stream, the very first live stream that I never had it before and it looks like some people liked it so much so uh what can I say about that so now it's it's been already one year after the day departed sorry I'm late for this one for this video but um hey really I really missed it and just only take a little bit of bits but hey why not just put in to put that one sold out and just make ourselves go around and for this day in the party. Three days ago, uh, Tommy Anderson, who created uh, the the series, posted the tweet that I just sent to show you a little bit. So, here it is. There are the tweet. This is the tweet there from Tommy Anderson about the, unstor the untold story of the data part about Cole. And another one is about how did he get a Cole scar. Few more pages for this. The untold story of Cole's scar. I'm gonna have to read out the whole thing here by a tweet. This is this November third. It was October twenty nine. I was the day in the departed. Now it's October third. The way of the departed. This is a big whole story, and I want to read it so bad. I want to read it so bad. Now it's time to read the whole story about Cole, of how he, how how did he got a scar in the first place. All right, let's do this. This story is called Way of the Departed. This is the, it's written it's written by Tommy and Andreessen. I don't know that. All right, here we go. But first, he's gonna put that one forward right here. There are more stories to be told about the Jug than we can fit into our TV series. Often, those stories are never told. We get other ideas, choose to focus on differently, priorities change, or we just change our minds. This one of those stories, or part one of them, because it was never finished. There are just few first pages of what could be a short novel. It is a story about Cole and why a person I really wanted to tell. So this day in the party seemed like a good opportunity to do so. I put the idea of this story into a first person narrative. The TV series is aimed at kids, but we are fortunate that it has had a long enough life to have fans so has grown up with it. So this one, however oh, little it is, is one for you guys who are just a little bit older and appreciate a tone which is a bit darker than what we normally do on the show. There are more pages written than this, but I'm not sure I will ever get around to finish it. Hope you enjoy it and find it inspiring. Consider it a piece of non kin fan fiction. Happy to fight. So that happens on October 29. So it's just the four words I'm in reading. Get to this choosy part, okay? Alright. Here we go. You ready? So it's, it's cold and, in fr and I'm freezing. I shouldn't be because I'm not alive. I'm in an ice labyrinth. It feels like I've been here before and it feels like I shouldn't be here. My friends are with me. They're looking at their reflections in the walls of ice and discuss what they mean. In their reflections, they look different, older and wiser. They wear the robes of sensei. Jay seems ecstatic and that his reflection has an eye patch. He thinks it is cool. Then there's a change in his mood and he seems to be hiding something. We haven't been the best of friends lately. I try not to think too much about it. As I walk up to the ice wall, I wonder about my own reflection. I look alive again and it doesn't quite make sense. My hands are glowing bright orange. But what really catches my eye is something on my forehead. A small green scar. I get really close to get a good look and realize that there is something moving inside it. It starts to glow. I am blinded by light as I stare into an abyss. My friends and I have been seeing many strange things and places, but this one takes the cake. Faces float by in a constantly twisting maelstrom, maelstrom of green. They are all hard to make out. But some seem familiar to me, and I hear a voice I have not heard in a long time. It is calling my name over and over. It hurts deep inside, so I take a step back from the wall. 
but my reflection doesn't respond. He just stands there, staring coldly back at me. The scar on his forehead starts to convulse, first just a bit, but then more violently, and then his entire head splits open, and it is unbearable to watch, but I find myself unbearable, unable to look away. The headless body falls into the ground without a sound, but the scar remains floating in midair. I try to turn away, but now I can't move. My friends are still chatting, but it seems like their voices are a million miles away. I realize this is the end. The scar keeps growing. It is now as big as me. I stand there, and as it leaves the ice wall, it comes on me and consumes me. Everything goes green. This is when I wake up. It always is. I must have had this dream a hundred times, but I have never told anyone about it. It's my secret. And there seems to be a lot of those lately. I am in my room, not our home, an old temple floating the, uh, 300 yards above ground. We don't know why. It's just did one day. I suspect J and E and know something about it somehow. They have been really close lately. Sometimes playful and clearly in love, but other times they've seemed bewildered talking hush voices, and they seem to be examining the temple grounds. I'm happy for them, but it's also disturbing. I know something about the temple edges as well. It is still haunted. I could tell the others, but it would freak out Jay, so I've kept it to myself. Secrets. Waking up tonight is different though. My room is bathed in a bright green light. It reminds me of how Lloyd's eyes have started changing after Master Wu went missing. He trains alone so intensely, and he is really connecting with his powers. Whatever it is. He has done well filling in after Master Wu, but, the clear, but there is clearly not comfortable with it. After a few seconds of trying to find the source of the green light, I realize the source is me. The light comes from me, from the scar on my forehead. And that's not the only thing which is different. By the window, the ghost of Master Yang floats mid-air. I get the feeling he has been watching me for a while. There is an expression of sadness on his face, which I haven't seen since that night on top of the temple. The night he intended to curse me, but ended up saving me. I became mortal again, and he chose to remain behind as the master of the house, or try to save me as I am to be told. After an uncomfortable silence, I asked him about my glowing scar. His voice quivers as he speaks in answer cuts me like a knife. My dear Cole, that's not a scar. It's a rift. And it will open soon. Yeah, I know. I just seen that kind of that very old story there that it, it seems like putting yourself into mind to it. About Cole, about Cole's point of view, it's how he got there, how he definitely got himself up there becoming the ghost and controlled by his messy game. And you can see the whole rift. And I think Tommy got a little point out about Cole that how he how is it transitioned from being a ghost to being immortal again. But he has left off with a green scar on his forehead. Cole! Cole! You're missing training! Hurry up, or Lloyd will give us one of his speeches on punctuality, dedication, and discipline. I don't want to listen to one of his speeches or on punctuality, dedication, and discipline. Cole! The shrill voice of Jay cut through the cold morning air like a scythe. It was often when they and Cole at the Temple of Ages too. That's one of the drawbacks of living high above the clouds. Another was getting up and down, but there were more advantages than drawbacks. For instance, one heck of a view. Real estate agent Patty Keys was constantly sending the ninja pamphlets to persuade them to sell. They weren't going to sell. And they were starting to feel really bad for the mailman who had to make the trip up there several times each month. His job hadn't become easier either. Nia had come up with a system by which they could move the float item to new locations as they please. All it took was some very thick chains and the powerful boosters of Destiny's bounty. The sad reality was, 
that the prospect of the temple with an ever changing view just got Patty Keys even more eager. Which would more work for the mailman in his old pedal propelled bicycle? Cole had considered to reveal that the temple was still haunted to scare Patty off, but he had decided against it for Jay's sake. This morning, Cole was nowhere to be found. As Jay entered his room, all he found was Cole's neatly made bed and a note carefully placed on his window. Cole was already far away. He had left before sunrise, which is pretty early when you live on a floating mountain. He was on foot and carried only a small bundle with some food and necessities, cake, plus his new weapon of choice, a very a heavy hammer which had been given to him by his father, Lou. Cole was glad that his father had come to terms with, being, with him being a ninja, and the gift of the hammer seemed to be the definite approval of, from him. Cole became quite fond of it too. Sure, it took something, took some getting used to, and it was a lot heavier than his old scythe, but it seemed very fitting for a master of earth to wield a hammer. But that wasn't exactly what was on Cole's mind as he wandered on. He was still haunted by his dream and what Master Yang had told him. I and Yang, I used to be known as a sensei without students. I was very strict about titles back then. Being a sensei is not something you come by easily, and so the others should respect you. I used to be very strict with my students about such formalities. Now I am but a ghost of my former glory. No longer a sensei, but still the master of the temple of Erjutsu. It is floating in the sky. For a while I was extremely confused about it, but since Ninja moved in, I obtained a few answers. First, I asked Cole, but he was as clueless as I was. Jay on Nia, on the other hand, seemed to know something. I have been able to eavesdrop on them on several occasions, and I have picked up bits and pieces. Apparently, events involving the notorious Digin Pirate King, Narakan, happened and unhappened, and my attempt of becoming airborne as an anomaly of those events. So Narakan is still out there. I wonder what possibilities that presents. Is there some special way Digin cheat death? Can a Digin really die? I will need to look into that. I have done terrible things in my pursuit for immortality, acceptance and glory. My fate bound forever to this temple is a fitting punishment, and I am at peace with that. I still feel shameful sometimes, and hope that, will one, that I will one day be able to redeem myself to the students I wronged. I have just one student now, Cole. We have agreed to keep my presence a secret for the time being. I suspect that old Wu had some suspicion too. Once he stared intensely at my painting in the main dojo for several minutes, then chuckled and winked at it before leaving. But he's gone now, so only Cole knows for sure. We, I have discussed at length the nature of our relationship. It is one fortune of necessity. I desperately need company. I admit that now, and he still has many questions about his own existence, and been touched by the death in several ways himself. There is another reason too. I finally told him. I finally told him last night. Before we met, I foolishly experimented with life and death. Now I pay the price. After the incident where I used the Yin blade and brought a curse onto myself. The temple of my students I found myself with plenty of time on my hands. I spent those captive years studying curses in the, after, in the afterlife. In the place I would yearned to go most of all, but never can. The departed realm is the most mysterious of all. All ninjas residents who have passed away in a true sense of the word have gone there. Only a few has ever made it back. Normally, if you can talk about normal when you talk about realms, travel between them is possible in several ways. But the departed realm is different. Incantations, dra incantations dragons, realm crystals, travel sea, or back doors are not enough. To access the departed realm, you need a rift. 
but a reef is dangerous, unstable. Scenes have a will of its own, and you have to force it open. You can never be sure of the outcome. I worry about coal. I don't know what will happen, but I have had much time since the last day in the park to think about it. There are many possibilities, but none of them are good. Cole is a pawn in it. I have no doubt that his dream speaks some truth, and if so, he will perish. This is tragic enough, but I fear even more is at stake. What will happen if a rift is unchecked? Will it keep expanding? Will it consume Ninjago just as it did Cole in his dream? Will the party be able to re-enter Ninjago? If they do, how many will be there? I mean, there be of them, and what will they be? This is the direct result of my doings on the day of the party. I was starting to feel that they have been more good than bad that came out of that fateful night. Cold turned moral, mortal again. My students' curse was lifted, and my old lonely temple was cleansed and became the home of the ninja. But now, I see that it isn't so. The rift on Cole's forehead must be closed. I mean, that's a very big assignment there. So, wow, this is a, hmm, this is a very, very great story for the creator of Ninja, for creator Ninja, next to Ninja. I mean, he have done a lot of this one, especially with this non ken story, right? I like that one. At least. So, Tommy, if you're watching this video, we really liked it, okay? Uh, you can do more a lot. You can do more of those stuff because I might gonna watch a lot of them because there's too many things that I might be going on about the day of the party and about Cole being himself back from being a ghost to back to being himself as a human. It's only that matters that Cole's being back in on the human, but. He's got a laugh in his scar. He reminds himself about like being stuck in his ghost. I really like that story. Okay, guys, that is the end of the video. And um, I was I was very late about the day of the party, but be day of the party, everybody. Okay, guys, I'll see you next. Guys. Oh, sorry. Oh, I got way too much forward to that. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. All right, bye.